If you are like me and you love Halloween, I know that you get anxiety the second that your pumpkins start to wilt. And that is exactly what happened to me this Halloween. I didn't have time to carve pumpkins beforehand, so I did them the day before. And then the next day it snowed on them, so they were immediately withered and crumpled, and it absolutely broke my heart. So I've decided that I'm going to make myself for the next holiday an immortal child. And I'm not talking about like a Claudia situation from Interview with a Vampire. I am talking about making a holiday decoration that will not break, that will not wither, unless, you know, say my cats get a hold of it or some horrible thing happens. But the elements will not affect my festive friend. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an immortal gingerbread house. And how I plan on doing that is I'm going to make it out of polymer clay. It looks pretty similar to gingerbread, so I think we'd be able to trick the eye so that I can enjoy it on my mantelpiece year after year and nothing but the intentional bludgeoning of one of my furry friends will end its life cycle. With that being said, let's get to the project. So I started out with drawing a design on my iPad and there's a couple of reasons that I go digital instead of good old manual with pen and paper. Number one is I can make it any size I want just by changing the settings on my printer. Number two, it's way easier to make sure that the pieces are accurate because I can just cut out a piece of a wall and then make the sides for a new piece of the house the same size as that. It's a lazy way to do things and I am lazy and crazy for life, baby. Now it's time for us to cut everything out, which is pretty self-explanatory. The only advice I have on this one is to make sure that you have some rounded edges, just because that makes everything look a little bit cuter and softer. If cute and soft is not the vibe that you are going for, then I suggest nice hard edges instead. Now that we've got all of our shapes cut out, it's time for us to open a giant box of polymer clay because that's how much it's going to take to build a house. To be real, we only ended up using a fraction of the box, and now it's time to unpack everything and condition our clay. Conditioning the clay means that you make it soft after it's been hard in its package, and this looks like like duty. It is now my duty to flatten it out so that we can cut into these sheets. Did you see what I did there, guys? Anyways, the rolling pin was the worst, so I brought out the big guns. This is a pasta machine and it's great for pushing your clay into one solid sheet that's the same thickness all the way through. Now that we've got our little sheets, we should just pat that baby down to make sure that there's no air bubbles because we can stick our paper pattern right on here and slice around it. Kids, make sure to get an adult to help with this and no, I do not count. I am not certified in that area yet. I'm still a giant child. Anyways, to cut out these center pieces, I had to develop a little bit of a technique because they can get kind of stuck on the paper. You're going to want to stipple it in and out just so that the paper doesn't get stuck and you don't get drag on your design. It leads to a much smoother finished product in the end. The face ended up being the most difficult of the walls because of all of those little teeth that I had put inside of the mouth. It ended up getting stuck onto the paper, so I decided that I would cut the whole mouth out and sculpt the teeth on later. It's looking rough at the moment, but I just need you guys to trust the process and that I know what I'm doing. Because there had been a few issues with the mouth, I decided that I would just do a nice curved line and then sculpt the teeth for the back window over top of things after the fact. Before I could sculpt anything else on top, I wanted to bake things and also make sure that I had the measurement for the light that I was going to put inside. I got these off of Amazon, they're a remote controlled light. I pressed it into the clay to get a measurement and then I cut it out and it fit perfectly. Next I just took this little soft nail scrubber brush and I went over the surface of everything to give it some pock marks so that it looked like it had been freshly baked. I also cleaned up some of the edges with this pointy tool just to make sure that everything was nice and smooth before it went into the baking process. The nice thing about polymer clay is that you can bake it and then you can keep sculpting on top of it after the fact, so that's what I did just to save these shapes. To make sure that your new sculpt sticks on top, I use a little bit of liquid Sculpey just to dampen the surface and it really gives it an extra bit of grip. I swirled it around with a brush on the surface I wanted to work on and then it was ready to hold on to whatever I wanted to make. I decided to put some spider webs in the window and this process was finicky to say the least. Of course I decided that I was going to do the most forefront window before any of the others and figuring out how it worked properly, but I think it ended up looking okay in the end. It's just very delicate and it was kind of tricky to weave all of the pieces together. Because I'm going for more of a spooky vibe, I decided I wanted to give the eyes a little bit of a pronounced brow so it looks a little bit more sinister. And then of course I put the teeth over top with some little spikies and smoothed them in very gently. If you're having difficulty smoothing some of the unbaked clay into the baked clay, I recommend getting one of these little silicone brushes. It works wonders because sometimes your fingers are too big and bulky to get into little crevices like this. I has me some sausage hands, so I understand. I felt like the center of this window was missing something so I decided I would sculpt a tiny little baby spider. It helped to cover up some of my inexperience with weaving, so I was very pleased that I did this. 
Another great way to smooth your unbaked clay into your baked clay is to use isopropyl alcohol. You just put a little bit in a cup and make sure you're in a well-ventilated space, but then it melts it down so that it looks pretty much seamless. I went back in with my nail brush just to make sure that the textures matched up, and then I started the process all over again on all of my other pieces. I did develop a little bit of a technique for the back window where I put these little C shapes along the edges and it made it look much more like spider webs. So if you're having difficulty with the weaving like I was, I recommend doing that technique instead. You do not need to weave tiny little bits of clay in and out of each other. You can just make a C shape along the edge and it gives the illusion of spider webs. The last piece that I needed to add extras to was the roof. I got out my trusty pasta maker again and made a big old sheet because I'm going to be cutting out hundreds of tiny heart-shaped shingles. This process took an incredibly long amount of time, but yes, it was worth it because it is really cute. I used a little cookie cutter and sometimes your cutouts might get stuck in your cutter, so make sure you have a little round tool handy just so that you can pop those bad boys out. We just brush the surface again with a little bit of liquid Sculpey and then we're good to stick all of those shingles on there. I only put the shingles halfway up the roof because I have a plan later for something a little bit cool. Now that all of the sculpting is finished, we can tackle these windows with a little bit of UV resin. I'm going to lay everything down on this silicone mat just so that it doesn't stick to our surfaces and it's easy to peel up after it's cured. I've got some glitter and some pigment and of course the UV resin. I'm dumping a bunch of the UV resin into the cup so that I can mix it with the glitter and the pigment. I'm going for sort of an amber vibe so that everything can feel warm and cozy and Christmassy like there's candles and a fire inside. That's what all haunted houses are actually full of demons having tea parties and sweets and candlelit fires. Now the side windows are going to be a little bit more opaque than the front and the back just because I didn't want the candle that we've got inside to show through in its raw unfiltered form. The silicone mat was an absolute lifesaver, it made everything perfect and the light looks exactly how I want it to. So I just repeated that process for a little bit on the second one. This was quite a long process because you have to wait a minute in between curing everything. For the front and back windows I mixed up something that was a little bit lighter just so that if I decided to change the color of the light with the remote, it would shine through. It was very tricky to get this into the mouth, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, and I am sure glad that I had these toothpicks here. It took me a solid 15 minutes to get it done, but I managed it in the end. I also decided to leave our tippy top pattern wide open because it did this really nice light shine that I was a big fan of. Last up, we got the back window and I just dumped a bunch of UV resin in there and it seemed to work somehow. It's time for me to start assembling everything, so I cracked out my hot glue gun and glued the light inside, which is not something I needed to do. I just discovered later, but that's okay, it looks nice and I was excited. To put everything together, I just drew some lines with hot glue and stuck everything in place. I was surprised at how sturdy it was really quickly. It worked very well. Some people might knock hot glue and say that it's cheap and quick, but that's my motto, I'm cheap and quick. The glue did the job. Obviously, anytime you use hot glue or assemble something like this, there's gonna be a few cracks and crevices, but we have a way to beautify that and cover them up later. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. Now that the house is all assembled, I can get to work on making some finer details, and I decided that I wanted to make some peppermint horns for this house. To make the horns, you wanna make a pointed log of white and a pointed log of red in the same size, and then you swirl the two together, making sure that you keep all of the swirls even. I like to bend mine in half so that both of the sides are the same size before I cut it, and then I just kind of swirled them into these sort of sultry S shapes. I tested them out on the roof and I did the appropriate adjustments to make sure that they sit the way I wanted and I also used some isopropyl alcohol to clean up any of the gross red that was stuck on them. I also made some cute little jujube bees that I dusted with glitter while they were still soft. Some people say you should paint them with Mod Podge and then do this. I recommend doing it while they're still fresh if you can be gentle enough with your clay. I like the effect a bit better. I also want our gingerbread house to look a little bit aged so I got this black paint out and a damp paper towel. The basic principle of this technique is that you get a lot of water inside of your black paint and then you wash it all over the surface of the polymer clay and wipe it off. It makes everything look like it's been sitting in an angry witch's cottage, which is generally the vibe that I'm trying to go for. And it is now beautifully seasoned with the smoke of several curses. I also whipped up a paint to match the color of the gingerbread itself and then I put that over top of the windows so that I could paint on some more detailed spider webs. I did two coats of this to make sure that it was nice and opaque. Over top of that I added a little bit of white paint with this dotting tool. You can get this silicone craft icing at most craft stores. This one in particular all you have to do is get a little piping tip and then you can pop your frosting on top of anything you want. For ease of decorating, I put this on my Susan, formerly known as a Lazy Susan, but I'm not gonna call her that because that's just kind of mean and I'm not here trying to insult chunks of rotating wood. 
I covered up any imperfections from earlier, so around the horns and on the edges of the building to make sure that you couldn't see any of the hot glue. I also had these cute little peppermint circlets. I didn't make these, I ordered them in from a nail art place, but they're very easy to find if you'd like to get some yourself. And I think they just added an extra layer of flair. The technique that I used along the edges was to push and then pull up so that I would get these little teardrop shapes that were mostly even. I'm still learning how to frost, but I'll get there eventually. I also placed rosettes at the very bottom just along the edge, and then I decided that I was going to put all of my tiny little candies just along there. I also put some absolutely massive dollops on top of the house and then put our giant jujubes on top. The initial arrangement of them was a little bit jammed. Janky? Lucky for us, when it's wet, there's some wiggle room so you can make sure that everything lines up. Okay, folks, we're done, and it is time for the moody glamour shots. Enjoy! <laughs> So here she is, friends, all perfect and beautiful and shiny. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this? Pros and cons, let's go through a little list. The things that I would do differently next time, I would not glue this into the bottom because I don't need to. I made the mistake of thinking that it was a Christmas ornament and that it would be hanging up and this would need to be suspended. But you don't need to do that. You could put electric tea light in here, the batteries die, or if this malfunctions in some way, you don't have to deal with that glue. So the other thing that I think that I would do differently is I would probably make the spider webs independently of the windows and then glue them in. So I would make them to size, bake them so that they're hard, and then I would put them in instead of trying to like fiddle de la da dee them in there and weaving them inside of the window. I do like the painted windows, so I would definitely do that again. Really lovely, quite ornate with the little dot work. So I really like that. My favorite things about this, I think are the horns and the jujubes. I didn't expect the glitter to give them so much dimension and make them look so different. And I also really love his little tiny mouth. I'm, I'm super pleased with this project. It couldn't have turned out any better. Those things that I mentioned were just like a couple of little things that I thought that I could do differently. I'd love to do another project like this down the line. It was really, really fun. I now have my immortal child to keep me company for all of eternity. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will consider interacting with it in some way by slapping some of those buttons so that other people might be able to see the things that I'm creating. If you'd like to support me in other ways, you can also check out my online shop. We've got a bunch of really cool stuff there. I make illustrations. I just released a coloring book and I've got a bunch of really cool plush there ready for the holiday season for those that you love. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey today. I think that it was a really big success and I'm just glad that I was able to share it with all of you. I'm grateful for you. I love you. Okay, bye. Thank you.